date is 1104. Morris, if you want to get started, we might still have a few people. We might still have a few people entering, but we want to go ahead and get this party started. Um, hello, everyone. We're so excited you're here. Oh. Um, happy National Trio Day. And as a note, Trio Day is legit. Um, it was actually officially declared in 1986 by Congressional Resolution. So um, I'm so glad you're all here for our first RCCC Trio Day celebration. Uh, before we jump into the fun, we have just a few housekeeping items before we dive in to the good stuff. Um, so we are recording today's event. Um, and then, you know, this will allow attendance for any of our TRIO team members that were not able to attend today. Um, also, if possible, we would love for you to turn on your cameras since we can't be in person. Uh, we'd like to feel like we're together as much as possible and seeing your beautiful faces helps us feel that way. Um, also, if you could just mute your microphones if you are not talking, um, that helps make sure that we can hear um, the speakers and the events that are happening. Um, and you can unmute your mic to ask questions um, or participate. And you can also use the chat feature at any time during this event um, so that we can communicate with you that way if, if that's your preference. Um, and then we'll go over the agenda real quick just so you know what to expect for the day's events. Um, so we are gonna get into our, our welcome a little further. We have um, a wonderful keynote speaker lined up for today. Um, we're going to have prize drawings throughout each of our segments, um, so that's exciting. Um, and we're also going to have some really fun activities, and again, prize drawings after each um, activity. We have five TRIO alumni members on a panel today to talk about their experiences as they were in college and in the TRIO program. I'm really excited to hear from them, and I hope that you guys will... Um, Ask any questions that you have of them because this, this is really about you and your day and learning all about TRIO and what it can offer you as students in your um, academic journey. Um, and then we will have our closing remarks and then the final drawing for today is actually an iPad. Um, and you do have to be present to win. So um, at the end of our events, we will do that final um, drawing. So we're super, super excited about that. All right, now let's get this party started. Um, I'm so excited now to pass the torch over to Lisa Bovard, one of our awesome TRIO Student Support Services Advisors, and she's gonna proceed with our first drawing. Hey guys, I get to have the fun today. I got lucky. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna draw for an Amazon gift card. Oh, hold on, there it is. We're going to draw for a $25 Amazon gift card this morning, and we're going to use our new Trio bags. I figured it's easier to draw out of our lovely Trio bags than out of a hat. So what I have done, I have your names on cards. I'm simply going to do old style. We're going to put the names into the bag, and I'm just going to draw one out. I figured that was the easiest and most fun way to do this. So I'm actually not going to look. And the first gift card is going to go to, hold on, hold on. My fingers don't work in the mornings. The first one is going to, ah, my fingers, is going to go to Donna Wall, who already messaged us this morning. She is actually watching from work this morning. So thank you, Donna. I will have your gift card and I will go ahead and message you uh, Monday morning and let you know how we're gonna go ahead and get this to you, Donna. So thank you, Donna, for taking the effort and time to watch for more. And I'm going to go ahead and hand this back to you, Misty. Misty. Awesome, so exciting. Happy shopping, Donna. I'm so excited for you. Um, now, I am so proud and honored to introduce our Trio Day keynote speaker, Mrs. Natasha Lipscomb. Um, Natasha Lipscomb is a native Richmond, Virginia, uh, native of Richmond, Virginia, sorry, and currently serves as our Vice President of Student Success Services here at RCCC. Um, Natasha has over 21 years of experience in education administration, 
to include uh, public K-12 and higher education. Ms. Lipscomb holds a Bachelor of Science in Psychology, several North Carolina teaching certifications, and a Master of Management in Public Administration. She's a professional leadership trainer, coach, and speaker through the John C. Maxwell Certification Program and enjoys adding value to the lives of individuals and to teens. Natasha is a values-based leader, giving her time and talent to several community boards over the years, including the Chamber of Commerce in both Cabarrus and Rowan Counties, um, the State Employees Credit Union, and the statewide student leadership development program at William Peace University. Natasha believes that success hinges upon proactive relationship building in an atmosphere of trust and civility. This doesn't mean that everyone will be happy, but the environment will be healthy. Natasha is a 2015 recipient of the Women Embracing Excellence Award. She was also a candidate in the 2016 election for the Kannapolis City School Board of Education, where she helped contribute to the largest minority voter turnout in the history of the community. Natasha is a member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority and is a licensed minister at Bethel Temple Faith Church in Concord under the spiritual leadership of Bishop designate Bert Bertram D. Hinton Jr. Her most important leadership role is the one she plays within her family. She's married to Barry Lipscomb, a native of North of uh, Kannapolis, sorry, and they have two children, Aria Janelle, who's a news reporter in Cleveland, Ohio, and Jaron Brock, who's now a freshman at NC State University. Natasha, welcome to our first trio day, and you just take it away. Thank you so much, Misty, and hello, everyone. I want you to see my hand. You can't see my whole body. I don't have one of those stand-up desks or I would be standing up and giving you my full energy, but it is my goal to um, not be before you long, but I'm excited about today. I'm very grateful to be here with you all, TRIO scholars, the learning community that's going to make the difference uh, here at Rowan Cabarrus. Uh, I also want to say hello to Rowan Cabarrus staff and faculty and all of of the friends of the college who may have joined us today. Um, I'm grateful again to each of you. It is my mantra in life to find thanksgiving in everything every day. Um, thank you for sharing these next few moments with me. I'm really humbled about today because it's been in my heart for a long time um, in the many roles I've played here at Rowan Cabarrus uh, to have a TRIO program, to have a program that's founded and based in research um, that is nationally known. Um, why not our students have the best of the best programs? So this federal program uh, has been on my heart for a long time. And so I want to take some time just to thank the people who uh, were willing to go the extra mile with me to make sure that we put in a, a competitive application for this grant um, because I knew I couldn't pull it off by myself. Uh, Dr. Carol Spaulding, our college president, when I brought it to her, she said, oh, you guys want to try this, you know, um, I, you have my support. She had to sign off before we could submit anything. Um, the expertise of Tamara Walker and Misty Moeller, the guidance of our grants director, Rebecca Hooks, and personal and professional experiences of folks like Kelly Antonides. And then when we received that grant award, we were so happy because it allowed us to recruit the incredibly important talent of our TRIO team and staff to include uh, coordinator April Costner and Tavares Baxter and advisor uh, Lisa Bovard. I'm just so grateful to the whole team. And I hope you all um, as TRIO scholars understand uh, the uh, incredible amount of resources that have been uh, placed in the capable hands of these folks so that you can have every opportunity to succeed succeed. Um, so I wanted to start off by saying thank you to everyone who have assembled here and an especial thank you to our TRIO scholars. Please wave at me out there so I can see you all, you TRIO scholars. Put something in the chat if you're not on the video. Oh, I love seeing your faces. You guys are, are giving me life right now. So I want to talk to you a little bit about being um, here in this space with me. Um, I, I'm, I might tell a funny story. I might tell a sad story. Um, those of you who know me uh, know that you're kind of pretty much just get me. I'm just in, in the rawest form. Okay, so um, I need you to participate with me today. Um, some of the things that I'm going to share today um, will require you to digest them. So you're gonna have to take them all the way in. Um, there'll be some stuff that I share that's I, I describe it like a cool drink on a hot day, right? 
And uh, when, when I share something that's like a cool drink on a hot day that you can relate to, I want you to, to put in the chat, ooh, you know, like you're taking it in, ooh. You can even uh, use your emoji and do a thumbs up for me, okay? If, if it's a cool drink on a hot day to you, something I'm saying, you know, you can do one of those. Now, I might share something that's a little more in depth than you have to chew on it, right? And, and, and I want you to be like, mm, uh, I feel you, Miss Lipscomb, but um, I'm gonna have to chew on that a little bit. And I want you to say, ah, for that. Um, you know, it's like a meal, a good meal to you. You have to chew on it. It's good. You might heat it up two days later and eat it again. So I want you to, to give me an ah on that kind of thing. And then there's some things I might share with you that are not new at all to you. Um, you've lived this stuff. You know it to be true. It is uh, really similar to your story. And I want you to give me a oh yeah on, on those kinds of things, okay? So we're going to do some oohs and ahs and oh yeahs because I can't have, the, you know, we had the housekeeping rules and everybody can't turn their mics on um, off. So um, I need y'all to give me something in the chat if that's okay. Somebody give me a ooh real quick just so I can know y'all hear me out there and feel me. I'm going to be able to use the chat. Yeah, Rachel. Okay. 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 Thank y'all. What about ah? You can spell it however you want to. Uh, ah, however you feel it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I, I feel some oh yeahs coming on, some people who are just going to be like, I lived that experience. Oh, yeah, that's me. That's me. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, all right. Thank y'all so much. So I know you got the oohs and the ahs and the oh yeahs. And when I think about the oohs of my life, the ahs of my thoughts, there's some things I thought but didn't act on and the oh yes of my experience. I have to take on a new mindset. And my mindset is that I'm determined to have a great life. I've just decided that's going to be my lot. That's going to be uh, the way I live my life. And it might not always be great moments and there won't always be things that are uh, going the way I plan them, but I believe it's all gonna come together for my good and for my great life that I imagine. Um, I pull from an excerpt, thank y'all, yeah, yeah, you feel me, from an excerpt from a book called The Code of Distinction. And in it, this author says, I am the combination, the culmination of all the people in my life and my family lineage since the beginning of time. I am their representative in a world they will never see. I'm doing something that I'm absolutely passionate about because somewhere back in time, somewhere down the line, somebody endured what it took to get to this country with nothing but the clothes on their back. They had hope, faith, and belief. And if they can do all that for me, then who am I not to represent them well? And who am I not to be great? So that resonated with me so much that I owe it to the people who paved the way for me and I owe it to the people to pave the way who are to come behind me. Now, that came from Cynthia Grosso uh, in a book called The Code of Distinction. And she talks about building your own brand and making sure that when you walk into a room that you leave it better than when you got there. And when your name is spoken again, that the brand is what people will remember, um, that they won't forget the way you made them feel. Um, how many of you have heard that people remember some of what you say most of what you do, but they never forget the way you made them feel. So it's all about branding yourself and leaving an impact as a leader. Now, I, I have to do the work every day to remember who I am um, and, and how to lead myself. Um, now I'm responsible for a division of folks here as vice president of student success, admissions, advising, financial aid, all of those wonderful areas that help our students. But I've got to every day be intentional about the way I lead myself. Um, so I wanna talk to you about leading yourself because it seems like an easy thing to do. But if you're like me, you can be your own worst critic. Um, and sometimes we don't give ourselves enough credit for what we do or take the time to explore what we really have to offer other people. Yeah, yeah. So deciding to have a great life is, has very little to do with what you've been through and everything to do with what you are willing to do and where you are willing to go. Let me say that again. Deciding to have a great life has very little to do with what you've been through, 
Because if I told you what I've been through, you'd be like, what? Um, but I believe having a great life has everything to do with what I'm willing to do now and where I'm willing to go. If you feel me, give me something. Oohs, ahs, oh yes. So I have a passion for empowering women. And I believe it is truly part of my calling. As you know, I work here at the college and I must say that students are very interesting to me to say the least, I, I need them in my life. And one of the programs that um, I, I helped to lead at one point is called the National Society of Leadership and Success. You may have heard of it or you'll probably get an invitation soon to join it. Um, at an induction ceremony a few years ago, I met a family of one of the early college students who was a part of the National Society. She was being inducted that night. And um, being an early college, it means she was earning an associate's degree and her high school diploma at the same time. And at the end of her, the ceremony, her mom and her family came over with her to meet me. And her mom expressed her very own interest in leadership. And she asked for my business card and we were hoping to connect later. Neither of us knew the circumstances under which we would connect or that would bring us together again. Uh, just a few months later, her daughter was at a relative's house, our student, her daughter, and she was comforting her older sister who had decided to leave a domestic violence situation. And the husband had come to the house pounding on the door while her sister and her two newborn sons ran in a closet to hide. And out of rage and anger, he forced his way into that house and he began shooting. And he took the life of this beautiful 17 year old young woman. He did flee, uh, flee the scene and later he was found having taken his own life. Um, Jennifer's mother, the woman I never knew I would hear from again or who I thought would call me, she did call and she asked me to share a few words at Jennifer's funeral. In this woman's most vulnerable state, as a mother, she was concerned with all the young people that would be at Jennifer's funeral, all these high schoolers, and she wanted them to be inspired by Jennifer's life. That day, I read one of Jennifer's college application essays. I didn't use my own words like I'm doing today. Um, I was honored to be her voice to her generation that day. And it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, but her words were perfect and her message was so very clear. And I want you to know, I share that story with you because I want you to know that your voice is important and that you've got to be clear about your message every day in leading yourself and in those who are looking at you as you go through this journey. You are a student leader now and you have been given a voice for so many who may not have the courage to speak up. And so they watch you and they listen and they move toward their goals as they see you moving. So when you have an opportunity to tell someone's story or even your own story of courage, your story of sacrifice or your story of gratitude, that's my word y'all, be the voice and speak that with authenticity. So I also wanna tell you that Although that was the hardest thing I've ever done, I've kept in contact with her mom and we've had um, opportunities to talk about um, the foundation that her mom created and the things that she's doing to uh, help folks who may find themselves in a similar situation. Now, leadership is influence and Jennifer's mom and Jennifer's life was very influential in my life. And I'm sure you have those same stories. Though they be sad, yes, Miranda, they give us those oohs, you know, they give us those things to chew on. And I want you all to um, understand that you can influence and you can do it anywhere. John Maxwell, in fact, says that um, leadership is influence. It's nothing more, it's nothing less. It's not a title, it's not a doing, it is influence. And so getting other people to come along for a good cause. So let me tell you about a funny story that um, my daughter to this day um, just cringes when I tell it because she's like, mom, you, you really, really shouldn't have acted or behaved that way. But I use this story because it is um, it showed me that you can really lead anywhere at any time. So it was a Sunday afternoon and I'm just going to tell you, I'm not the best cook. OK, I was apologizing to my husband last night even. And, and, and I got these little recipe cards that you're not supposed to even be able to mess up, but I find a way to do it. I'm just, that's just not my thing. <laughs> it's 
So it was Sunday afternoon and, and I'm like, you know, honey, you want me to try to, you know, make something or do you want me to, and I always have my back pocket, right? I'm like, well, do you want me to go get some chicken? You want me to go pick up something, right? Yeah, Valley, I got you. So he's like, yeah, why don't you go pick up something? For, for, you know, because he, he, he don't want to hurt my feelings, but he's like, yeah, we get better off probably if you go pick up something. So I had to um, a chicken place. Uh, and I'll just say it's, it was KFC y'all. So, and, and I don't own any stock in them and, and ain't nobody gonna get mad. Okay. So my daughter who, um, who was at that point, a uh, junior in high school, uh, she rode with me. So for branding purposes, uh, let's just say this was a mother daughter thing, not so much about the chicken. Okay. So I had to, uh, remember that she was watching, remember influence. So I walk into this KFC, I order a 10 piece chicken meal. Okay. Now, Mind you, I might not be a good cook, but I can order some food, okay? I can get it down to the nitty gritty, DoorDash and all of them. They know what's up. It's gotta be just how I, I ordered it, right? I'm good at that. I gotta be good at what I'm good at. And so I'm, I'm the kind of person, my husband likes, you know, the breast piece of the, of the chicken. I like wings, right? Flats, that's my thing, but I like wings. My daughter um, and my son, they more chicken leg kind of people. So I don't just order a 10 piece chicken meal. I have like specific pieces and the numbers I need. This is how I order. This is how I do. And I, my expectation, a flat wing girl. Yes. My expectation is that people deliver, right? Especially when you're paying them. So let me, let me not get worked up, but let me tell you how I had to do. Okay. So I walk in this KFC and I order my chicken and, you know, I know some folks in the area. So we're standing around talking and all this stuff. And, and I noticed that some people came after me, they started leaving out the door before me and they got their chicken and I don't have my chicken. So I go over to the counter and I'm like checking again, you know, um, checking on the 10 piece bucket, you know, this, this wings, you know, legs, you know, so the lady turns around and she says, oh, we, we don't have that order. We gave that to somebody in the drive-thru. You wouldn't come through the drive-thru? I was like, no. I said, well, it's no problem. Go ahead and, you know, can you put the order in again? Now, mind you, I've already paid. And I don't know when, you know, we started paying before we get what we, what we actually deserve or pay for. So she puts the order in. I wait, y'all. I wait and I wait. Still don't get my chicken. Long story short. I go back over to the desk and at this point she's frustrated with me. I'm like, when did I become the problem? I'm in here trying to, you know, be the good customer. So instead of acting the way I normally would have acted when I wasn't working on leading myself, I decided I was going to lead her. And as my daughter tells it, y'all, for about 15 minutes, I was the manager of the KFC that day. I decided that I was gonna influence her by using uh, the things that I had learned, right? So leaning in. So I get a little closer. I'm like, so tell me what's going on with the chicken. She's like, you know, we don't, we, we were allotted a certain amount of chicken to cook on Sundays. I'm the assistant manager, my manager's not here and I can't give you those pieces anymore because we gave that to somebody in drive-thru and this is what I can give you. I said, but I can't go home with that. Y'all know what I'm dealing with, right? I'm already not a cook. And then I can't even get the right piece of chicken for the man, right? That's gonna be a problem. So, you know, she's telling me we don't have any more. So I, I said, listen, you know, is there, you know, this is KFC. It's Sunday, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. Y'all don't close for some time now. What are you gonna do when you have more customers come in who want the pieces of chicken that I'm requesting? Well, they just ain't gonna be able to get them because I can't, sell what I don't have. I said, well, do you have it anywhere? She said, yes, yeah, back in the in the refrigerator, but my manager told me I could only sell this much and this is, I said, well, do you have access to the chicken? She's like, yeah, I got the key to it, but I can't, I can't cook. Then she starts, you know, feeling like she's not empowered. She doesn't feel like she has what she needs. And how many of you have ever felt that way? You want to deliver, you want to get something done, but you don't feel like you have access to do that. Right, right. So I, I just said to her, I said, well, it seems to me that you're the person in charge of this situation. You're the person who has access to the chicken and the, you need to be empowered to do that. Can you call somebody? No, no, no. So after we talked through it and I helped her understand that it's not just my problem that she's going to deal with, but she's going to have some unhappy customers and she has, um, you know, got to stand up and lead in this situation. She said, okay. So she said, you know, I'll go back there and get the chicken, whatever you want. So she decided she was going to leave. 
And I told her I'd back up. Now I left her my little Rowan Cabarrus card. And, you know, I can't I can't help her, you know, beyond that. But if her manager wanted to call me, I would be willing to tell him how wonderful she was as an assistant manager that day. She was so she got to the point, you guys, where she was so very apologetic. And she even began to um, lower in her anxiety when she realized that she had the key, that she had the access and that she was doing what was right in that moment. Now, I know this is about chicken, y'all, but y'all understand where I'm going. You, when you have the key, when you have the tools, when you have the people, when you have the resources and you have the access, you don't have to scramble and feel like you're not in control of your own life. And so this TRIO program, I know, will be that for you because you will have access to all the resources you need and you won't have to scramble. So in the calmest voice I could, she and I worked that out together. And I saw her empowerment as soon as she made the decision to take control of that situation and to do what was right in that situation. So today I'm gonna end this way and just let you know that whether it is a, a sad story or a place that compels you to continue to do the important things you're passionate about, like my story of Jennifer, or it's a funny story where you had to take advantage of the resources and the time and the people around you um, that, started out not so good, but ended well. Um, I want you to know that that's also a place of empowerment and a place that you uh, can learn from and grow from. And at Rowan Cabarrus Community College, in Student Success Services and in the TRIO program, I want you to know that I, as your vice president, am committed to making sure that you have those access uh, pieces and that you have the tools you need. And I know that the TRIO support staff is here and would agree with that absolutely 100%. So I'll leave you um, because my time is up and I know that there won't be another inaugural trio group at Rowan Cabarrus. You are the first and you will be the only. So you should be proud, very proud of that because you are paving a way and you're making a legacy. Remember this, just as I started, I'll say to you, you are the combination, the culmination of all the people in your family lineage since the beginning of time. You are their representative in a world they will never see. You are doing something that you are absolutely passionate about because somewhere back in time, somewhere down the line, somebody made a sacrifice so you could be here. And with that, you should have hope, faith, and belief and if they can do all that for you, and if I'm willing to do everything I can to help, who are you not to be great? So go be great, be the trio scholars you've been called to be, and I'll be here with you every step of the way. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your day today. Woo, oh my goodness. I am feeling the love, Natasha. <laughs> And I'm feeling empowered. I would like to just have a minute to just sit in that for a while, just for myself. So I'm I'm so excited. Um, your your genuine passion for this program and the students we serve just shines so brightly. And and we I know we all feel that in our bones right now. <clears throat> so thank you for that. Um, and I'm I'm so excited about the opportunity for the students um, in our program. So now, even though I can't sit in that empowerment for as long as I want to. We'll do the next best thing, next best thing, and kick it back over to Lisa for another prize drawing. I mean, why not do that and celebrate, right? I know. I like. I'm excited to do the prize drawing, but I hate to actually leave that whole atmosphere. But we're going to move on. We're going to do the second prize drawing again. Another twenty-five dollar Amazon gift card, y'all. Again, names on the cards. Oh, I got to back up from it. We're going to put them in the bag again. Same concept. Not looking again. And I'm going to pull a name out. And this time, oop, back it up. Miranda, Mae. This one is yours. Yay, there she is. Woohoo! So, Miranda, I will email you on Monday and get information from you to get this sent out to you. So, Miranda wins that one. And now we are all going to be winners because I'm going to hand it over to my partner at South Campus, advisor extraordinaire, Mr. Tavares Baxter. Tavares, it's all yours.
You're muted. Fantastic. Can we hear me? Yes, and this is being recorded too. This is fantastic. Anyway, um, thank you, Lisa. <laughs> so, uh, as you all know, we have not met many, if any of you, in, in person because we, you know, it's been a pandemic. It's been a really rough time, and include in addition to us not being able to meet you all, you all haven't had a chance to meet one another. So, as you know, all of you have created a small little video. Um, to introduce yourselves to, to one another, but also to us and the other people who are here on this call to let us know who you are and who you aspire to be and who you, and who you want to be seen as. So we're going to share the video that you all participated in right now. Not, not like now, now, but now, now, here we go. <laughs> Mute myself. Hello, my name is Norman Mendoza. I'm a trio student. I'm amazing. Hi, everyone. I am Misty Moeller, and I'm the proud director of the Trio Student Support Services Program, and I am passionate. Very passionate. My name is April Costner, the TRIO coordinator, and I am supportive. Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm a TRIO advisor at North Campus, and my word is genuine. Hello, my name is Michelle Kaufman. I am a TRIO student and I am disciplined. Hello, my name is Valerie Vasquez. I'm a TRIO student and I am reputable. Hello everyone, my name is Marlon Quintero and I am a TRIO student and I am prosperous. Hello, I'm Valentina Newmiller and I'm a TRIO student and I am reliable. Hi, my name is Mercedes. I am better known as Sadie and I am perseverant. I will and I do overcome. Hi, my name is Jakeem Lee, and I'm a TRIO student. And the words that describe me is a team player. Hello, my name is Tavares Baxter, and I'm the South Campus TRIO advisor, and I am dependable. Hi, my name is Delaney Yancey, and I'm a TRIO student, and I aspire to be resilient. Hello everyone, my name is Rachel Lyman. I'm a fellow TRIO student and I aspire to be confident. Hey, my name is Miranda Mays. I am a TRIO student and I am strong. Hi, my name is Mary. I'm a TRIO student. Page one content, text two, inserting point start. So I hope everyone was able to see that all right. They can hear this, hear it well. Yes. Um, uh, of course, you know, we would have loved to love to do that in person, but I'm glad everyone was able to participate. You know, everyone's not on this call. Um, we all have you, we have you all on video and we're super excited to 
have you part of our team. And now for our next activity, now that you all know who each other are, we're gonna have a little bit of friendly competition, if that's okay, with a game that we like to call, <laughs> who wants to be a tree, trio Leonair? You get it, trio Leonair? Yes. <laughs> it, 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 it's fun, I'm about to pull up a Kahoot slide for you all. Here we go, we can all get so if you have if you have your phone if you have your phone or uh sorry I'm moving my phone uh, if you have your phone or some type of device um please pull it out and get ready. Cool. So for for folks who have played Kahoot before, um if you would please go to to the website www. Kahoot, K A H O O T dot I T. Um, and then once you go to that website, it'll ask you for your game pin and then you'll put the, this game pin in. So it's 7295351. Looks like we already have Autumn in here. Fantastic. Put a little bit of this good old Kahoot, Kahoot music in here. All right, so I am looking at the chat to see if anyone. Oh, there's two chats. Nice to meet you. Oh, okay, great. Thank you, Missy. I'm gonna give everyone about one more minute before we start. This is also open to staff and visitors and other folks. If you are in this room, you can join our game. It is not just for our students. We would like everyone to participate if you like. So as, as we're waiting for our last, as we're late, waiting for our last few people, how it's gonna go, I'm gonna read the question before the question actually pops up on screen. And then I'll read all four, uh, all four answers or two answers, because some are multiple some are multiple choice, some are true false. So I'll be reading each question before we get started. All righty. About 20 more seconds. I wasn't counting. I should have been counting. Um, Angela, okay. This feels about right. All righty. About to get started. So, for our first question, when was Rowan Cabrera's Community College founded? Mars, it's a little blurry. Can you read the answer? Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, 1953, 1952, 1987, 23 BC. Thank you. Sorry about that. Is it still blurry? Okay. It's better now, but it was blurry when um, the answers came up. Okay, got you. So it looks like right now we only have Autumn on the scoreboard. Thank you, Autumn. Congratulations. We have a couple more questions so other folks can catch up. Question two, how many campuses does RCCC have? Six, five, two, or one?
Yes, the answer is five. We have our um, Cabarrus Business and Technology Center, College Station, North Campus, North Carolina Research Campus, and South Campus. So let's see where we are. Oh, Autumn has been dethroned and Valley has taken over with Noah and Rachel close behind. Congratulations, folks. This is tight. Next question, true, false. NCRSD stands for North Carolina's recent campus. True or false? Yes, the answer is false. NCRC stands for North Carolina's North Carolina Research Campus. So let's see where we are. Valley has maintained the lead. Rachel close behind, and Autumn has snuck back up to third. Congratulations! I don't have any biases here. <laughs> we like all of our students. Next question: True, false? Uh, the Ron Ron Cabarrus Community College Foundation scholarship application is open. True or false? True, it is open. And do you know what that means? Apply. Valley is on fire here. Rachel and Autumn have maintained their standing and Naomi is coming up and so is Delena. Go, let's go to our next question. What is the TRIO program? A, the Jonas Brothers, B, um, program for people who like the number three. C, federal programs designed to increase academic opportunity and attainment. Or four, B, the legislative, judicial, and executive branches. Correct. The answer is, well, the answer is not really C. It's circle or yellow. I'll call it yellow. Uh, the answer is federal programs designed to increase academic opportunity and attainment. Oh, Valley has been dethroned by Rachel. Autumn has maintained their position, and Delana and Noah have come close behind. Next question How many programs are part of TRIO? We have red, five, blue, three, yellow, seven, or a uh, green, eight. A little bit of a trick question. A little bit of a trick. Yes, it was a trick, but y'all are on it. Yes, so there are eight programs educational talent search, student support services, upper bound, veterans upper bound, upper bound math and science, educational opportunity centers, Ronald McNair post baccalaureate achievement program, and the training program for federal trio programs, which is specifically for staff. The other seven are specifically for students. Looks like a lot of people knew that. Good job, y'all. And where are we? Ooh, top three has stayed consistent. And then we have Chet coming up, new to the leaderboard. Congratulations, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Question seven, participation in TRIO programs has shown a decrease in degree completion, an increase in degree completion, no impact on degree completion, or uh, green, we don't have that information. Sorry, I'm gonna try to be a little better with the colors. Yes, thank you, everyone got it. An increase in degree completion. If it was not, then we wouldn't be here, but we are. And let's look at the scoreboard. Top three has been, remained consistent. Delena and uh, Noah, welcome back to the top five. Next question. TRIO programs only serve students in the community college setting. True or false? Yes, the answer is false. We don't... 
uh, the trio programs, you know, there are seven, there are the eight programs. We don't just serve um, community college students. They serve students from middle school all the way up to their post-baccalaureate program. So if you decide to go on past your bachelor's and get more advanced degrees. Very versatile program. Oh, Valley is back. Welcome back to the top spot, Valley. Good to see you, Autumn. Good to see you in number two as well. We have Rachel, who's new up here. Congratulations, welcome. Then we have Delana and Naomi. This is getting competitive, y'all. True or false? The Civil Rights Act of 1964 allowed the TRIO programs to come into existence. True or false? Yes, the answer is false. It was actually the Higher Education Act of a slightly later year. I can't tell you that year, but um, but but yes, it, it was not the Civil Rights Act. It was the Higher Education Act. This probably knocks some people down. Let's see. Autumn's back. Delana's back. Valley, Naomi, Rachel, welcome to the top. Couple more questions. Couple more questions. True or false? The first trio upper bound programs for educational talent search. Uh, Student Support Services and Upward Bound. True or false? Yes, the answer is actually false. It was the first three TRUER programs were Upward Bound, Educational Talent Search, and and uh, services for disadvantaged students, but the name was later changed to Student Support Services. Also a trick question, but it did not start off as Student Support Services. I am so sorry. Let's see what this did to the folks. Ooh, it allowed Donna to come up. Everyone else pretty much remained the same in the top. Let's keep it moving. We got a couple more questions. True or false, TRIO programs only serve students with disabilities. Well, that was quick. Yes, the answer is false. Um, the trio program serves students with students with disabilities, students who are first in their students who are first generation college students, which means neither their parents have attained a four year degree or first gen students with disabilities or students who classify as, as low income. You also see we have the other programs as well with the veterans and um, and students interested in uh, math and science. But yes, so we don't just serve students with disabilities. They serve a lot of different students. And here we are, Autumn, Delena, Valley, Naomi, and Donna. Ooh, it's, it's, it's pretty close, pretty close. Question 12, when did the first TRIO programs get started? Uh, red, 2020, blue, 1964, yellow, 1965, green, 65 million years ago, as depicted in the pictures. This was actually our first TRIO season and his pick. Kidding. Yes, the answer is 1965. And to go back to our previous question, it was the Higher Education Act of 1965. Scoreboard, Valley's back, Rachel's back, Autumn, Delana, and Naomi have maintained. Congrats. Oh, that's real close. True, false. Rowan Cabarrus Community College is older than the federal TRIO programs. True or false? I mean, somebody's going to know a little bit about what you see. Yes, true. Rowan, Rowan Cabarrus Community College actually started off under a different name in 1963. Top three remain the same. Rachel has come back to the to the top five. So is Donna. Congratulations. Valley and Delana, y'all are two points across. Somebody needs to click one of these buttons a little bit quicker because that's too close, too close to my comfort. Question 14. You can follow RCCC and their student life Instagram life <laughs> and the student life Instagram live events at at RCCC Student Life, at RCCC Wellness, at Beacons Nest, at RCCC.edu. I 
promise you, it's okay to follow the school on Instagram. It's fine. Yes, it's actually at rccc.edu. Good catch, y'all. Oh, top five didn't change. Interesting. Question 15. This trio alumni went to St. Petersburg Junior College, was in Upper Bound, and starred in Black Panther and American Horror Story Cup. We have Red, Henry Bonilla, um, Blue, Viola Davis, Yellow, uh, John Quinones, or Green, Angela Bassett. Yes, Angela Bassett, the people. <laughs> yes, uh, starting both of those, it was awesome. Congratulations. Yes, Valley, congratulations. <laughs> um, this trio alumni went to the University of Texas, was in educational talent search, and a former U.S. congressman for the 23rd District of Texas. Same answer, red, Henry Bonilla, um, blue, Violet Davis, Yellow, John Quinones, or Green, Angel Bassett. Yes, the answer is Henry Bonilla. Uh, he is a he, he is a former uh, former U.S. congressman in Texas and was an educational talent search. Okay, Delana, look at you at the top five. Brand new. Con congratulations. Welcome to the gold spot. Got two questions left, so let's see if you can maintain. This trio alumni went to Rhodes College, was in student support services, and starred in How to Get Away with Murder. Same answers. Um, red, Henry Bonilla. Blue, uh, Viola Davis. Um, yellow, I don't know, yellow, John Quinones, or green, Angela Bassett. Yes, Viola Davis. Had to get away with murder. Did they get away with it? Tune in to find out. We're not sponsored by ABC, sorry. Yes, and Autumn and Rachel have come up. They are so close. The difference of about 40 points. So this last question will be the will decide who's the winner. Um, this trio alumni went to St. Mary's University, was in Upper Bound, and is the host of What Would You Do? Red, Henry Bonilla. Um, blue, Bala Davis. Yellow, John Quinones. Or green, Angela Bassett. Oh, no, it's not Angela Bassett. I don't know why that's marked, it, but it is John Quinone. Sorry, I didn't have that today. Sorry, yes, it's, it's not Angela Bassett. So third is Delena. Congratulations. Second is Rachel. And first is all them. All three of these are my students. I promise it's not rigged. Um, with runners up Valley and Naomi. <laughs> awesome. Thank you all for playing. That was a lot of fun for me, and I will kick it back to my wonderful, wonderful counterpart on North Campus. Thanks, Tavares. Y'all are way too smart. Like, I am totally going to have to brush up on my trivia. But I can't. I can't do it. All right, final and last Amazon gift card. Name, bag, here we go. Last one. Not looking, not looking. Let's see if I can get one to come apart. <gasps> Michelle, and like Tavar said, not rigged, I swear. So Michelle, I will get with you this week, or on Monday, actually. Here's Michelle. Ha <laughs> ha! I will get with you on Monday and figure out how to get this sent to you on Monday. All right? And at this time, I'm going to hand it off to a lady that you all are quite familiar with at this point, Miss April Cosner, and she's going to introduce to you all some very big fans of the TRIO programs. April? 
Hi, it is so good to see you all for our very first trio day at RCC. Yay! So exciting. And I, I've been looking at all of your faces and it's just, oh, I'm just so thrilled that you're here with us and, go, and going to participate in the TRIO program. Um, we thought it would be great for you all to hear from our RCCC staff and faculty who are also TRIO alums so that um, they could share their experiences and share their stories with you. We are going to start first with Dr. Crystal Brown. And Dr. Brown, if you would please introduce yourself and share your title and just share with us whatever you'd like to share about your TRIO experience. Okay, so I'm really excited to be here. Is it still morning? One minute till afternoon. <laughs> but really excited to be here and share my experience as a TRIO student. Um, like April said, my name is Dr. Crystal Brown. I am the liaison for the early college program on South Campus. And then I also work with the CCP program. Um, and currently I'm filling in as executive director of CCP while our director is on maternity leave. So I'm kind of doing two whole jobs right now. Um, but just a little bit about me. I'm originally from Akron, Ohio. Um, and I was in educational talent search while I was in high school. I'm a, I'm a first generation college student. So I was the first on both sides of my family to earn my bachelor's in math. Um, I attended South Carolina State University. I earned my master's at Gardner Webb University and my master's is in school administration. And then my doctorate is in educational leadership. And I got that from UNC Charlotte. Um, so I started out, like I said, in edu educational talent search um, doing summer programs and um, information sessions during the school year as a high school student. Um, and I earned a scholarship, a four-year scholarship from Educational Talent Search to help pay for my undergraduate degree. Um, I also came back for the first two summers after my freshman and sophomore years and actually worked with Educational Talent Search doing the summer program for students who were in the program. Um, so I got my scholarship and I got to go back and work and get paid for two summers. Um, so it was a great experience. Um, being a first generation student, uh, I knew college existed, but I didn't know that pathway to get there. And so that program really helped guide me through um, and show me the importance and the opportunities that I would have um, for furthering my education. Um, just, just wonderful program. Um, I'm still in contact with one of my advisors that I had <laughs> from back 1997 when I graduated from the program. So um, good relationships built, um, lots of information that I was take, able to take and help me be as successful as a college student. So please take advantage of all that this program has to offer, um, share it with people around you. There are so many students who could take advantage of the opportunities that are afforded to them through TRIO. So just share and enjoy and take, take advantage of all that's available to you. Um, thank you all so much for having me here um, and allowing me to share. Um, and do I, are there any questions? Dr. Brown, I wanted to ask you, um, just as a follow-up to, to what you said, um, was there ever a time when you felt like giving up in college? And if so, what did you do to kind of push through that? Ooh, yes. All right. So let me tell you, I'll tell you, we got a little bit of time to tell you my struggle story. So I went into college as a teacher education major. So I was going to get, I was going to be a high school math teacher by the time I got to college. Um, and I am a terrible test taker. So taking the Praxis test for me um, was rather difficult um, to the point where I ended up changing my major because I just could not pass that Praxis test. And that was going to prolong my college experience well beyond what I wanted it to be. Um, so I ended up changing my major, but I had my goal set. I said, I'm going to be a math teacher if I can't go this straight route that I already had planned. We're gonna take a different route, route and get there. And so that's what I did. Um, but yeah, I was at that point of that test and finishing all of my teacher education classes, ready to go into student teaching and not being able to pass that test, I was done. But um, I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna still do it. I talked to my advisors um, and having been in the TRIO program and that support I got as a high school student, I knew how to go and kind of advocate for myself and say, this is my goal. I'm going to get to my goal. What I'm doing right now isn't working. So what are my other options? And so my other option was to change to be just a straight math major. So I got a bachelor's degree in math um, and then went back to school um, at UNC Charlotte when I moved here and took two more classes and then did some extra studying, retook my tests and passed it and got my teacher certification that way. 
But at that point, I was like, done, like, never mind, let's go find something else to do. But, you know, when you have that goal um, and you learn those skills of endurance and resilience, you just stick to it and say, all right, this is that straight path, but that's not going to be my path. So I'm going to take a couple turns and curve, but I'm still going to get there. And so I got to be a math teacher. I was an assistant principal. I was a principal. Um, and now I'm here working as the early college liaison. And then I also teach teacher education classes at Western Governors University. So I got to where I wanted to get, just not a straight, <laughs> a straight pathway, but I got a story and a struggle to share and inspire others with. Wow. Wow. Well, that, that really speaks to being able to be flexible and pivot when life throws you challenges. That's a great, great story. Yes. Um, do any of you students have questions? You're welcome to type in the chat and I'll read those to Dr. Brown or you can unmute and certainly ask. And I'm just going to, to be quiet for a second and give everybody a chance to, to ask a question if they have one. Okay. So I see one that says, what extracurricular activities was I involved in? So being in TRIO and interacting with my, uh, my peers, seeing all that they were involved in, I just kind of joined everything I could when I got to college because I wanted to stay engaged. And I knew that that was um, so important for me to continue to be successful academically, to be engaged kind of as a college student as a whole. So I joined the newspaper, the yearbook staff. We had a student government association. And so I joined that. Um, and actually, as all of my involvement there, I, uh, my senior year, I was Miss South Carolina State University at my school. So that involvement um, from freshman year, I was, I was just involved in things. I joined the step team. So I have a, my, when I go back to undergrad, that's just a huge, a huge college family there because of that involvement I started freshman year. But when you get involved in those extracurriculars, you're with like-minded students who are also knowing that they have to keep a certain GPA to do these things that we're in. So yes, we did the fun social things, but there was also a big focus on, we still gotta get our work done, get our GPAs up. We gotta maintain these scholarships and we gotta be able to get to grad school and get jobs when we leave here. So. Um, it really positioned me to make myself a well-rounded student when I got to college. We had a question from Noah who asked, how, would you have any tips for getting better at taking tests? Um, <laughs> I actually work with some test prep now. Um, I think the, the biggest part for testing for me that impacted me was just um, focusing on what I could so you study, 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 and you get there to the test. At that point, you, you can't worry about <laughs> what you don't know anymore. You're there, that test is in front of you. And I think the most important thing is to focus on what's right in front of you and what you can control in this moment. So in this moment, I can read this paragraph and I can look at my answer choices and I can make some eliminations and make my best choice. Um, and then just keep pushing from there. Because at that point, I can't say, oh, I should have studied that extra page back two weeks ago when I decided to go and have dinner with friends instead. Like you can't focus on that stuff. You have to focus on what you can control in that moment and just per persevere at that moment. And no, yes, you're gonna win. And sometimes you're not. Um, and I think accepting that when you don't win, the most important part is how do you pick back up, pivot and still get to where you wanna get to and just not saying, okay, I'm defeated. No, I didn't win this time, but no one is ever gonna win all the time. So just knowing how to pick yourself back up from that and keep going. Wow. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Those are wonderful words of awesome. advice. That's that's awesome. Thank you so much. And Thank Dr. You. Brown has another meeting that she has to scoot off to, but please stay with us as long as you can. And I we will. just I will. thank you so much for being here. That was I appreciate your sharing your story. All right. Thank you. And you all, um, you will you all share my information in case they have questions or want to connect with me. Absolutely. That's I a fabulous cannot answer. remember what my office number is <laughs> on South Carolina. <laughs> I can tell you how to get to my office, but I cannot, I don't know what my office number is, but email, I'm on email all day, every day. So just email me and I'll be happy to talk with you if you have further questions. Love it. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. so much. Trisha, Miss Trisha Stag Staggards is also a staff member here at RCCC. And if she's ready, Trisha, would you please introduce yourself and tell us about your role and anything you want us to know about your TRIO experience? Sure. Um, well, I have some things in common with Dr. Brown, actually. I'm also from Ohio, um, and she's probably the only one who would recognize where I'm from. It's Minerva, Ohio. It's a small town not too far from Canton, Akron. Um, and uh, I am the first in my um, entire family to go to college. I'm the baby of five, and uh, uh, not even any of my siblings had gone to college. So I really had no 
um, you know, no guidance in that way. But um, there was this program in Ohio called the Post-Secondary Enrollment Option. And um, I was able to join that my junior year of high school. And it allowed me to go to college simultaneously with my high school classes. And those credits from college would count back to my high school, um, you know, as, long, as much as I um, did it. I did it my junior year and my senior year. So by the time I graduated from high school, I was almost a junior in college. So that gave me a super great head start. And the state of Ohio covered my um, tuition and books um, while I was still a high school student. So it was a, a wonderful start for me, especially having no really resources. My parents both worked in factories and um, I have a handicapped brother who takes some, um, you know, expenses and things that uh, they couldn't really uh, help me with my college costs. So um, upon graduating from Minerva and um, the, where I went for the post-secondary enrollment option was Kent State in the Canton area of Ohio. Um, then I went to Xavier University in Cincinnati, which is where I graduated with my undergrad. And I stay very involved with the Alumni Association there. Um, that is where I did my TRIO experience as well. Um, since graduating from Xavier, I've served as the um, Charlotte chapter president for the vol you know, volunteering and um, offering activities and events for people to kind of get together and watch basketball games and do events and um, just kind of build some camaraderie about uh, around people who are outside of Cincinnati who had gone to Xavier. Um, and then I became uh, on the executive board of Xavier's Alumni Association. And for the last three years, I served as president of the National Alumni Board. So coming from no college background experience or expectations probably for me to even attend college. I ended up being the poster child for all 70,000 alumni at Xavier University. Um, and I went to uh, graduations and got to speak to the commencement ceremonies, um, undergrad and graduate and um, kind of inspire them and um, just kind of talk about the alumni association, welcome them as new members. So I've gotten a lot of great experience with college even after you know being out of it. Um, but true to form with not really knowing my way around college, um, I actually found out about the TRIO program a little late in my experience. So it was my last year at Xavier that um, I was able to participate. Um, and I had some really great experiences. They had a, um, a trip that they took. Um, there were probably about 20 of us on that went to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania and did the um, like a battlefield bus tour and got to kind of learn about the, the Civil War um, we also went to um, Hershey Park and got to try some chocolates and go through the chocolate factory. Um, they took us to Amish country so we could experience the um, culture that was vastly different for a lot of my peers from Cincinnati, but quite similar to my experience growing up because I did grow up in that very rural area of Ohio um, and got to uh, you know, kind of know a lot of people from, from very different the Amish culture. Um, we also did... Um, uh, we went to this sight and sound theater in Pennsylvania that uh, puts on plays of like the uh, the Bible. So it was like the book of Daniel. They did a, a big um, uh, kind of uh, theater experience of that. And they have like animals, live animals and a, um, a neat kind of theatrical experience of that play. So um, that, that was probably the most memorable trio experience that I had. Um, I haven't stayed as connected on the trio front as I have just the general alumni front for Xavier, but um, I've, you know, just really enjoyed staying connected um, all through. Um, as um, while I was in um, Cincinnati at Xavier, my family from like Minerva area, Ohio, they moved down to North Carolina. So when I graduated Xavier a couple years early, because I had already started college early, I came down here um, by default and I ended up going to get my master's degree at um, UNC Charlotte. And I'm currently in my PhD program at uh, the universe, um, at uh, Mer Notre Dame of Maryland University. So I've uh, continued that educational experience um, all along really. Um, <clears throat> let's see, I currently work as the um, lead program manager and training services at the college. Uh, so the, um, that's in the continuing education department. So our non-credit and short-term kind of training programs. I oversee about 10 staff who run everything from nurse aid programming to uh, real estate programming, to our small business center, to our programs for folks who are unemployed or underemployed and seeking employment. Um, I oversee our scholarship kind of area of continuing education and um, just kind of 
help out with even truck driver training. And, um, you know, we have the police training, we have the fire paramedic and all of that in, in my um, end of the college. So um, I, similar to Dr. Brown too, I had a, a kind of zigzaggy path to get to where I am as well. Um, when you're a first generation college student, you probably, you know, don't really have an idea of what careers you might be looking for. So um, you don't have doctors and nurses in your family or anybody to really steer, steer you one way or another. So I, um, you know, I kind of tried out a few different jobs. I worked in a bank from high school and college. Uh, I was like a teller and customer service representative, opening accounts and stuff. Um, realized the banking probably, about, while it was fun, it wasn't really something I wanted to do forever. Um, while I was in, at uh, Xavier in Cincinnati, I, I took pre-med programming, thinking that I might want to get into the medical field. So that's ultimately what I got my bachelor's degree in. Um, it was liberal arts with a concentration in um, um, both natural sciences, which is the pre-med route, as well as political science, because um, that was a fun thing for me, and American Sign Language, oddly enough, because it just also was another interest of mine. Um, but uh, so I, because of that, I decided I would work as a pharmacy technician, a veterinary technician, um, worked in a medical office. I usually carried three or four part-time jobs all at the same time to try to get as many experiences in and really see where I wanted to go with my you know, career path and ultimately fell into teaching at uh, Mitchell Community College. I taught English as a second language and really enjoyed the higher education environment. Um, so I have actually been in the community college system now for about 14 years, um, at Rowan Cabarrus now for 10 years. Um, and uh, you know, just that's why it's uh, inspired my PhD in higher education leadership. So uh, it's been a, an interesting, you know, kind of route, but, uh, you know, I've, I've really valued the fact that I didn't have a lot of, um, you know, I, I didn't really have a lot of guidance or clear path for me set, a, you know, set in front of me, but I was able to just figure out what I wanted to do by um, dappling in a lot of different um, kind of areas. Um, the TRIO program probably gave me the inspiration and, um, you know, the, um, confidence, I guess, as being one of many other people who had also no, uh, no information about college, didn't really know what things were like FASPAs and electives and all of these um, words that to the non-college familiar really is something that you really don't know what they're talking about. It's like a different language. I'm sure a lot of you students can relate to that. Um, but um, so TRIO, I felt like I was in a group that really understood me. And I, um, you know, just really benefited from those experiences that we got to take as a, as a group that we otherwise, you know, our families wouldn't be, have been able to afford or wouldn't have been able to provide us with those experiences. So, yeah. And if you have any questions on any of that or, um, you know, I can expand on anything. Do we have any questions for Tricia? Trisha, I know we have several students who can identify with, with working several jobs and trying to go to school. So thank you for sharing that. Thanks so much for sharing your story and being with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Angela. Um, Angela Nzinga here is, is a staff member. Angela, if you would introduce yourself and share your role, please. Hello, yes, I'm Angela Nzinga, and um, I work in the financial aid office here at Rowan Cabarrus Community College. So I'm the show me the money lady. Where's my money lady? I need my money lady. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm primarily at the South Campus, but I'm currently working um, from home. Um, but yes, I was in the TRIO program when I was in college. Um, I didn't find out about the TRIO program until almost towards the end of my sophomore year of college. And that was around the time um, where it was, it was a difficult path. They usually say your second year is kind of the toughest. And so the second year for me was the toughest. Um, I went to school in Colorado. Um, I graduated from Metropolitan State University of Denver. Um, and I received my degree in history and I minored in African-American studies uh, because I wanted to be a history teacher. 
Um, and I've always worked in education, even while I was in college part time, I worked with what they call the AVID program with high school students during my four years of college. And then after I graduated, I was a substitute teacher for a year, which was very interesting uh, <laughs> with mostly middle school and high school students. Um, and then in 2004, I worked for the Upward Bound program with Morehouse College um, as their uh, counselor, as the counselor for the high school students. And I had to live in a dormitory setting with them over the summer. And it was amazing for their uh, engineering program. Um, and we had a great time with the kids. We took them on all kinds of field trips, went to um, museums, had a lot of guest speakers that came in and spoke with them. And it was just amazing to see these kids flourish with in such a short period of time. And every single last one of those kids ended up going to, going to college, graduated. Um, some of them ended up getting full ride scholarships as well uh, for, their, for their bachelors. Um, so as far as my experience goes with TRIO, um, it, it was a wonderful experience for me. I was a first generation student. Um, I ended up getting a full ride scholarship a week before I graduated from high school. Um, it wasn't through TRIO though. Um, it was through a different program. But um, being with like-minded students and staff, um, because you guys have a great staff to support you as well. That makes a huge difference. I was very close with my counselor. Um, and, you know, there are times I would just go to her office and we would just talk about all kinds of different things and topics. And she and I both had this love for ancient Egypt. So we used to have talks about that all the time. Um, and she really helped me get through my sophomore year, because at that point I was like, you know what, I'm done with this. I don't think I can do this. And um, she and I really had a, a heart to heart about what was going on to include my mother who was basically like, um, no, uh, we're gonna have a, you're gonna think about this and when you call me back, we're gonna have a totally different conversation. So between those two women, um, they got me back on track and you know, I graduated when I was supposed to, but there were a lot of events too with TRIO for all of us to be able to get together and, and have fun from the picnics to the, um, to the museums. Um, we would even get together outside of the, the campus, whether that would be going to each other's homes. Um, you know, it, you develop that close bond where as a group, as a whole, it's like you're you're a team, you know, and you're you're there too, not only for your own benefit, but you also have other people that are cheering you on. So when we walked across that stage to get our diplomas, it that was just the most amazing feeling ever. So, you know, you might find yourself going through a difficult time, you know, you're trying to juggle work school, family, um, but just know that your trio family is, is always there for you no matter what. And there's never any type of judgment um, because we all go through things in life, period. You know, you, you, can't, you can't help that. So, but knowing that you have your, your trio family, that's what I always called it. We called it a trio family because that's, that's what we, that's what we were. Yeah. So that was my beautiful experience with the TRIO program. That was awesome, Angela. Does anyone have any questions for Angela? Wow, that was inspiring. <laughs> okay, now we'd like to hear from Leilani. Leilani, would you please introduce yourself and share your role? 
Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Leilani Mantia. Um, I'm a financial aid advisor at Rowan Cabarrus Community College. Um, right now, I'm kind of between both campuses, between both North and South, um, but my office is in the North campus. Um, I actually just started just recently with uh, Rowan Cabarrus. I've been here what, almost going on two months now, so I'm brand new. <laughs> um, but my experience with uh, the TRIO program was through the Educational Talent Search. Um, I actually found out about it um, my senior year of college um, through a friend of mine who was actually a part of the program as well. Um, I, um, I, I come from a single, a single parent household. Um, my mom was, you know, trying to make ends meet uh, for me and my sister. Um, and she didn't go to college. So I've, I'm a first generation college student. Um, so one with my experience uh, in the educational talent search program, um, they definitely exposed me to a lot of um, to the to college life. We went on a lot of college tours, um, which definitely helped a lot because my mom didn't really have the time to you know take me on college tours. Um, they helped with financial aid nights, which was great because you know I needed money to go to college. <laughs> And, um, you know, my mom, you know, didn't really know much about those things either. So um, they were definitely a big help um, because when you're in high school, you hear about those things and, you know, your guidance counselor is always trying to, you know, tell you about it. But I came from a big school. Uh, we had like about 500 students. So guidance counselors are spread thin all the time. So the counselors that I had through the educational talent search were definitely there to kind of like help fill in that that gap, you know. Um, so as far as a little bit about my story, um, you know, being in that program, it definitely helped me throughout college. Um, I graduated uh, with a degree in psychology. Uh, and I've actually been in higher education for quite some time. I got my start working in financial aid as a work study student. Uh, and I did that for all four years. Um, my first job out of college was in a financial aid office. <laughs> and um, I actually took some time after, you know, being in that role to kind of see what else was out there, because um, I still wasn't entirely sure if financial aid was for me. But um, I did some time in corporate America, worked in banking, worked in insurance, but none of that really I didn't get that same fulfillment that I did working within higher education and helping students. Um, so now I'm back in financial aid. And one of my biggest things as far as working in this um, setting is definitely being able to kind of be a resource to you guys um, because we, we've all been there, um, whether it's, you know, having, um, you know, being confused about financial aid or being confused about your classes, just know that your advisors and your counselors, we've all been there, you know, we know exactly how you're feeling. So, you know, don't hesitate in coming to us because um, we'll be more than happy to help you. Wonderful, thank you so much for sharing that Leilani. Does anyone have a question for Leilani? You're welcome to unmute. And, and ask, or you can put something in the chat. <laughs> you got some great <laughs> chat action going on, Leilani. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Leilani, and taking the time to be with, with us today. You are, you know, the, the lady with the moolah, as someone just put that. So very important uh, when you're in college. And finally, last but certainly not least, the lovely Janae. Um, Janae, if you would please introduce yourself and share what your role is at RCCC. Hi, everybody. So um, my name is Janae Simpson, and I am one of the counseling interns with the Student Wellness Center. Um, so I work up under MISTI. I am um, located at the South Campus and also College Station, um, and I work from home. 
So a little bit of background about myself. Um, I went to the University of South Carolina um, for undergrad, and that's where I was involved with the TRIO program. Um, I was there from 2013 to 2017, and I was part of TRIO all four years. Um, one of the programs that TRIO offered was called the Opportunity Scholars Program, or OSP, um, and that is how I was involved with TRIO. Um, so I got my bachelor's degree from USC with a major in experimental psychology and a minor in general education. So like my two loves are psychology and counseling and also um, child care and education. Um, I started my master's program at UNC Charlotte in 2018. And this is my final semester there. I'm finishing up um, a master's in counseling and clinical mental health counseling and I have a concentration in play therapy. Um, and I really love working with lower income communities or um, also children and their families. Um, I love working in collegiate settings, so I'm really excited to be an intern with the Wellness Center here. Um, and also minority communities, and not just like racial minorities, but like religious, um, sexual orientation, you know, um, your ableness or whatever it might be. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of background about myself. And as far as my experience with TRIO, um, like I said, I was in the Opportunity Scholars Program or OSP. Um, I am a first generation student um, and I also come from a low income background. Uh, nobody on my dad's side of the family really went to school. It wasn't really, you know, an option. Everybody just worked. And on my mom's side, um, she actually was in college for like a year or so and wasn't able to finish um, due to finances. So she was never able to obtain her four-year degree. Um, so I was the first in my family to earn my bachelor's. And I don't think that would have been possible without OSP and without TRIO. Um, they helped me out financially, which I know we all like love and care about. And that's very important with college. Um, one of the big things with OSP was that we had our tuition reduced um, substantially. And we also had access to additional scholarships. So like on top of the ones that we would get through the college or through your major, or whatever, we had additional funding um, through OSP. And then also what I thought was really helpful was that, um, especially our freshman year, we were all like a, our own community. We took the same classes as each other. Um, we had the same professors, like they kind of rotated among our classes. We had smaller class sizes, which um, I think was definitely helpful because especially being a first generation student, when you're going to a campus like as large as USC, it can be overwhelming. Um, so we were able to like form bonds with one another early on. Um, we also had like workshops and things like that on different subjects that we otherwise may not have um, had access to or known about the different resources available to us, like different financial workshops, um, ones on like your career, building your resume and stuff. Um, but also other things like um, healthy habits. We had um, like a sign language one one time. And then my favorite was the studying abroad workshop. Um, because through that, I realized that I had the opportunity to study abroad. I didn't really think that that would be something that I could do, you know, coming from my background. I had never even been on a plane before. Um, but another, um, an older student in OSP did a presentation and she shared about how the program helped her find funds and everything to do so. So she inspired me and I looked into it um, and I was able to get financial assistance through OSP to study abroad. Um, so I did that as well. I spent a month, I believe, yeah, a month before my senior year in Madrid, Spain. Um, and like I said, that was my first time on a plane out of the country and I traveled to um, 
several other places while I was there. So there were so many opportunities that I was given through OSP, through TRIO that were academic and then, you know, other opportunities as well that I didn't even know were available to me. Um, and then a little bit more, like we all lived in the same dorms freshman year um, and we had different like events and stuff as well. So like how TRIO was hosting this TRIO day, um, we had in orientation, our first day of school was actually the day before the first day. So we kind of had the campus to ourselves before everyone came in. So it was really helpful to have these people, um, the administration and the staff members really looking out for us and helping us out um, and being able to provide opportunities to us, the same opportunities that others have um, that we might not have. So, yeah. Awesome, Janae. Yeah, awesome. That You've really had a lot of great experiences, and I love uh, you're bringing up the fact that, you know, you had, uh, you bonded with a lot of other TRIO students, and we are certainly hoping that we can create that kind of, uh, you know, camaraderie and, 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 you know, support group, not support group, but like support um, peers supporting each other, especially during the time of COVID, but, but even more importantly, when, when all this is over and we can all be together. But Janae, does anyone have a, any specific questions for Janae? You can type those in the chat or feel free to unmute. People really got excited about hearing about the study abroad opportunities that you had. Yeah, they were, um, there's, yeah, the opportunities were endless with study abroad. Um, and like I said, I wouldn't have known about it if it weren't for TRIO and that presentation. Cause I kind of thought it was too expensive. You know, I didn't have the time to do it. I didn't know how to go about it. And they really helped me with that process. Wonderful. Um, quick plug in, like I said, I am with the Wellness Center. Um, so I am here for support for you guys, um, counseling support, also academic support. Um, very well-rounded program that we have. Um, so if you guys need someone to talk to or if you're looking for more resources or anything like that, um, you can find us on our student wellness page online. Thank you so much, Janae. I appreciate your sharing your story with us. Can, that concludes our TRIO alum panel. They were all fabulous. Can y'all show them some love in the chat, please? Yay, they were absolutely wonderful. Thank you so very much. And now for the moment that y'all have been waiting for the iPad giveaway, I'm going to turn it over to the lovely and exciting and enthusiastic Lisa Bovard. Well, I really think I got the best part of the day somehow. I don't know, I got to sit and listen to the trio panel, got to listen to Natasha, and I got all the cool gifts to give away. So I think I won. I didn't win the gifts, but I think I won the day somehow. But anyway, our last giveaway. We are giving away an iPad today. It is actually an iPad Air. It is nothing like the ancient, broken, been used by all five of my children iPad that I happen to own. And because I happen to own an ancient old iPad that's been used by five children, we're not doing a name drawing that I would possibly be responsible for and, you know, might rig. So Tavares is going to pull up for us an actual wheel with everybody's names on it that we are going to spin. And if you are still here, you will have a chance to win an iPad. It is actually sitting in Miss April's office at North Campus. And same as with the gift cards, I will get with you on Monday to get your information so that we can get it shipped out. But right now I'm going to have Tavares go ahead and hit that wheel. Tavares, if you wanna go ahead and spin it. Give it a big old spin. Here we go. And it is, is that the big spin? Is that the, Haley's. Uh, Haley is, not on the call at the moment. So let it, we're gonna hit it again. You have to be here. 
So hey, go ahead and hit it again. And this time it is going around. And let's see who gets it this time. And Donna, I do not believe is back on the call. Can y'all double check me on this? I am. You are? I am. Donna, it's like the double winner of the day. Congratulations, Donna. Thank you. Look at you. I want to be loud, but I can't be loud. So thank oh, you. How does it work? So we all have to like do the quiet thing. Congratulations, Donna. All right. Hey, guys, I really, really want to thank you for coming today. We've been super excited about this trio day. And I really appreciate y'all coming and participating. We are so excited to get this program going, get it started. This is a great way to get things started off. But right now, I'm going to have to quit for the day and hand it back over to Misty so she can wrap things up. Misty, you wanna take it over? Yes, that's so exciting. I think we're all a little jealous that we um, either weren't eligible or did not win that iPad. But kudos to Donna, I'm so excited for you. Um, so this has been such an awesome event. Um, and I just, again, I can't thank you all enough for making our first trio day such a success. The energy has been amazing. Our presenters have been wonderful. It was so great to hear all the, the just the different stories from our, our panel members. Um, so, but we're really excited about you all, the students, and um, we really can't wait to see what is to come um, for all of you. So speaking of what's to come, we did wanna just share here at the end some upcoming events. Um, I think we have a, a slide to, to show that as well um, for some events that are coming up in the in the near future um so feel free to take a picture of this or refer back to the recording um, but you'll also find a list of events all the time listed on our trio website which as a reminder is rccc.edu slash trio if somebody wants to put that in the chat from the from the trio team um so exciting things are happening so march 5th which is next Friday, uh, Finding Your Passion and Purpose, which will be a virtual career workshop. Um, and then Tuesday, um, actually it's for several days, our Transfer Madness will be going on and there's gonna be a lot of information on um, the website, also on the um, advising website, but you'll see lots of things on the splash page about that transfer event. And it, it's really a lot around um, the transfer process and we'll have a lot of four-year schools and universities um, from different backgrounds. We'll have um, HBUs, private, uh, state schools, a, a wide variety. So I'm excited for you guys to, if you have an interest in, tra in transferring, that will be a great opportunity for our TRIO students. And we are helping um, with that event. So we wanna make sure that we um, keep you guys informed. Um, so before we close out, I just, again, wanna give a big thank out, thank you to the students for attending this inaugural TRIO Day. Um, and congrats on being among the first TRIO Student Support Services cohort. We just really are so looking forward to continuing to work with you. Um, we also wanna thank Ms. Natasha Lipscomb for serving as our keynote speaker today and sharing her heart with us. Um, and thank you also for our TRIO alum panel. Again, it was great to hear your stories and how TRIO has impacted you. As a college student, we really appreciate your time today. Um, and then some, just some people behind the scenes that really helped to make the event happen today. Our student life team, Barb Meidel and Dennis Rivers from, uh, again, from Student Life helped us with a lot of planning. Um, and then Julie Thoman and Jan Boone from marketing and uh, media helping us pull a lot of things together. And then Brunson, Lawrence, and Sherry Strong really helped us with getting all our supplies together and getting things shipped to you, to all of our TRIO students um, to, to help make this a great day. Um, I think that is a wrap for today. So TRIO crew, I want to remind you that your TRIO team is here for you. Please reach out if you have any questions about your college journey or if you need anything at all. Um, our TRIO team is here for you. And just like you heard from the panel members, that's what it's all about is um, making sure that you feel a part of something really important because you are and you all are very important and um, we're here to remind you of that on a regular basis so if you just need that too you can reach out and say hey I need to be heard 
Um, so I think that's a wrap for today. And we, again, we just appreciate it. And we had such a good event and I hope that you guys have a great day and a great weekend. And we'll just say bye for now.